Today, we'll be exploring one of Elicit's most powerful features, columns. By the end of this video, you'll know how to go from a basic table to a table full of insight. The table view is one of the main reasons to use Elicit instead of other academic search engines. Using metadata from each paper, the table view allows to compare them across categories. When you click on a column, Elicit will give you the context for its answer. This perspective makes it easy to discover each paper's important takeaways and decide which papers to read further. To start, let's type in our research question. Is finasteride or Rogaine more effective for reducing hair loss in women? Elicit uses semantic search, meaning that it understands the contextual meaning of words. As a result, we can worry less about the particular words we use when searching. In our example, Rogaine is the branded name of minoxidil, but because these words are semantically similar, Elicit will treat them the same way. Now that Elicit has generated this basic table for us, we can begin to add our columns. To add a column, press the button on the right hand side which says add a column. There are five different types of column we can add. Metadata is information about the article itself. Population studied is information about the study group. Intervention studied is information about the experiment. Results is information about what we learned and what happened. And methodology is information about how the experiment was done. While we can add our columns all at once, I recommend that you add columns a few at a time so that we can explore our research incrementally. First, let's get a sense of the different study types by adding a study type column and a detailed study design column. Looking at study types allows us to get a sense of the sort of experiments conducted and to see whether the studies are robust. Second, let's explore the population characteristics of each study to get a sense of what sort of people the studies were conducted on. This is important as researchers are often not in a position to study an entire target population. Instead, they choose subsets based on age, gender, and other factors. Let's add the following columns, number of participants, age of participants, and population characteristics. As we can see, some of the studies have a relatively high number of participants, while others are quite low. This paper only has four participants. We should keep that in mind when generalizing from its conclusions. In addition, there's quite a range in ages between the papers. Furthermore, a lot of the studies were carried out on postmenopausal women, which is something to keep note of. If we're new to this field, this is a good way to learn about the different terms within it such as alopecia and hyperandrogenism. Next, let's explore the methodology by adding columns that cover dose and duration. As we can see, there's a wide variety of dosages and timescales, from as little as 24 weeks to as high as three years. Understanding this allows us to put each of these papers in context and assess how robust their conclusions are. Next, we'll look at the tools used to measure hair loss and their effects. Intuitively, this is quite a tricky thing to measure and something that could skew the results of a study. To do this, we'll add a couple of custom columns. Custom columns use the format, what was the blank? To add a custom column, we simply type in a word or phrase that completes this question. In this case, we'll have, what was the tool for measuring hair loss? And what was the improvement in hair loss? Once again, the answers here provide a great launching pad for understanding key concepts in the literature, such as the Ludwig scale and the seven point scale. Let's add one final custom column to explore the limitations of each study. Not only does this provide the limitation of a given study, but it also gives us a mental checklist of questions to ask when reading each paper. Using columns in this methodological manner is extremely useful when you're exploring a new research area with Elicit, which you can learn about by clicking here. 